At the end of 2023, I set out to finally commit to upgrading my storage for video editing. In this video, I wanna talk about the problem I was facing with the old storage system and why the most popular solutions didn't fit my needs or budget. Welcome to Video Vote Tech. A quick disclaimer, this video isn't sponsored by anyone and I purchased all the gear mentioned with my own money after researching. This video is, however, supported by our editing assets that are available on videosauce.store. If you need some new editing assets, hop over there and check them out. I'll put the link in the description. All right, let's talk about the old system I had in place. For several years, I've been purchasing these Glyph Blackbox Pro drives and using them as my main working drive on my PC. They come in up to 20 terabytes and are pretty fast for a single spinning drive at about 250 megabytes per second on Blackmagic speed test. I then use Backblaze to back everything up to their servers because it's super affordable and way better than nothing. Two problems arrive with my old setup. The first being the most glaring. I don't have a local backup. While Backblaze is awesome and I fortunately haven't had any crashes or had to rely on it, I really need to have a local backup and wouldn't suggest anyone following my old system. The second problem is space. While 18 terabytes is a lot of space, over the years with clients having ongoing projects and then some projects using footage from old projects, I quickly fill these up with old footage and can't afford to keep three or four hard drives plugged into my PC. The third problem is speed, and this isn't really a problem currently, but it is something that I wanted to improve if I did spend the extra money upgrading my storage. I figured it should at least be faster to warrant the extra money. So let's talk about the research I did, the options I was weighing, and how I finally found the solution for my budget. First, we have to talk about RAID, since I want to upgrade from just a single hard drive. This isn't gonna be a super in-depth lesson on raids, and if you don't need an overview, you can probably just jump ahead. First, there's RAID 0, also called striping. This is when you take multiple drives and treat them as one hard drive, and read and write to all the drives at the same time. This is great for performance. The downside is there's no protection here. You are relying on all the drives to work. If one drive fails, you lose everything. RAID 1 is called mirroring. Instead of multiplying the space and speed like RAID 0, RAID 1 puts the identical information on both hard drives. The upside is protection. The downside is that you don't get the performance increase or capacity increase. RAID 5, or parity, is when data is striped for speed like RAID 0, but a duplication or parity is built in to protect your data from a single hard drive failure. I think about this as being sort of an overlap among the hard drives. RAID 5 requires at least three hard drives to have enough room for that overlap. This balances performance with capacity. RAID 6 is called double parity. It's kind of like RAID 5, but it has even more overlap so that two drives can fail. And RAID 10 is a combination of RAID 0 and 1. You can stripe multiple drives and then mirror them so that there is protection in place for a drive to fail. The speed of RAID 0 at the cost of doubling the amount of drives to mirror everything. This is basically the route I chose to go. Higher performance on both read and write was important to me. Now I just needed to make the cost work with buying the extra hard drives. Just Google RAID calculator to get a feel for speed and capacity on the different setups. This can really help understand and compare these along with the cost and space. I did that a lot. Now that we understand the basic RAID options, let's talk about hardware. A lot of people use a NAS, such as Synology or QNAP. This is definitely the most popular solution based on what I've seen and worked with in the past. It has multiple bays for hard drives, and the NAS itself handles the RAID configuration. You can attach it with Ethernet to multiple devices, and you will likely need to get a 10 gigabit Ethernet card for your computer, because a standard gigabit connection won't take advantage of the RAID speed. This is a very valid option, but it just didn't seem to work for me. Here's why. For starters, a NAS is inherently more expensive since it's its own little computer with hard drive slots. Not only that, but then to back up a NAS on Backblaze, you have to pay their premium plan, which is per terabyte. So that gets way more expensive. It seems that you can't plug these in via USB and treat it like a normal hard drive to get around that. If you do know how, I'd love to know. So for those reasons, I'm sorry I'm out. The second option is to get a hard drive enclosure. This did end up being the solution for me, but it wasn't until I did a lot of configuring and then RAID calculating and then putting everything in an Amazon shopping cart to figure the cost until it made sense. 
These enclosures are typically cheaper because they don't have any processing power or network ports or software like a NAS. A common approach is to do what's called a software RAID, where your computer is used to configure the RAID. There are software RAIDs like OWC Soft RAID. It seems to be popular, but the first impressions based on reviews seem pretty mixed. The other option is within Windows storage solutions. Windows will configure a RAID 0, RAID 1, or RAID 5, and you can make a RAID 10 by making two RAID 0s and then mirror them with a RAID 1. I think the CPU use here is probably really small, but just the idea of taxing my CPU at all while I'm doing video work didn't really appeal to me. Then I saw this, a 40 terabyte RAID from Glyph. It's an enclosure with two drives in RAID 0, and it costs $1,300, which is way too expensive for me to get two of them so I'd have a local backup. But seeing it was a light bulb moment for me because I thought I could put it together a lot cheaper. So here's my storage solution that I came up with. I purchased two of these Sabrent two bay USB-C enclosures. These are really simple and affordable. On the back, you have two switches to configure the drives in RAID 0, 1, or just a bunch of disk and a USB-C connection to hook it up to your computer. On the front, you get an extra USB 3A port, a CFast reader, and an SD card reader. This is really small, but it does add a lot of convenience when you're backing up the footage. To go in these, I purchased four 22 terabyte Seagate IronWolf Pro NAS drives. Each of these now give me 44 terabytes in RAID 0. With the switch on the back, the enclosure is handling this, so I don't need to configure it in Windows, giving me the capacity and speed I was after, but no real protection. But since I'm getting two of these, the second one will be a mirror image of the working drive, essentially giving me a RAID 10 setup, which gives me the speed, capacity, and protection that I'm looking for. I say essentially because I did end up using Karen's duplicator to back up the drive every hour uh, or every night if I shoot a lot of footage that day. This seems to have several other advantages than just solely mirroring the two drives. I can go into the backup and visually see everything is there on its own drive, giving me the peace of mind to take my main enclosure away from my PC and to my laptop, knowing everything's backed up. All right, so here is the cost breakdown. And this was the determining factor for me. The Sabrent two bay enclosures were on sale for $110 each, normally $150, so $220 for the pair. The 22 terabyte drives on Amazon were $299 each, so $1,412 for the drives. A big note here, these are renewed from Seagate and come with a two year warranty. This saved me $560 total, $140 per drive. I'm not recommending that everyone go and buy renewed drives, but since I'll have everything backed up locally, and on Backblaze for that matter, this seemed to make sense for me. If I had a RAID 5 and no true backup, I'm not sure I would feel as comfortable doing this. All in at $1,632, this fit within my budget. And I finally had to tell myself with a total of 88 terabytes sitting on my desk, 44 working and 44 as a backup, I needed to pull the trigger. And so far the results have been great. With Blackmagic speed test, I'm getting around 500 megabytes read and write. This is great for when I'm transferring footage from my Blackmagic Pocket 6K shot on the SSDs. Real world, those copy super fast, about 300 to 400 megabytes per second. So if I need to transfer footage in the morning before getting to work, I don't have a ton of downtime. The amount of space has also been great. With all the old raw footage that I needed to keep online for ongoing projects, I still have 34 terabytes left to work with. The only con that anyone seems to have with these hard drive enclosures is that the fan on the back is kind of loud. I work in a pretty loud environment at my home, so it really doesn't bother me. Overall, nothing can replace the peace of mind of having everything go to a backup drive, plus the frugal dad within me is happy that I get to keep my $7 a month backblaze plan. The last thing that I still have to figure out is a good cold storage solution for when this drive fills up. I may want to buy two new drives if in the future prices get better or storage space increases, or I may want to purchase different drives to offload projects off for storage and these remain my working drives. If you found a good cold storage solution, I would honestly really like to know. You can tell me in the comments. Would I recommend this? The short answer is yes. But keep in mind that everyone's setup is completely different. This system is limited to two drives total, so a total capacity of 44 terabytes, and that might not be enough for you. A NAS may make more sense for you, and a lot of people liked the OWC's Thunder Bay, but it was just a little over my budget. 
those both came in around two grand to $2,500. And to be honest, it's been great to stop all the researching and price calculations and just move on. I wanna know what would you do differently? Does this work for your setup? Talking to other professionals in this industry has really helped me problem solve and just see how they're doing things completely different from me. Because let's face it, there's not just one solution for these problems. And that's what Video Votek is about. Professionals talking about all the different solutions to solve the problems we're all facing. Thanks for watching.